Let's get to him, hey? Senior coach of Port Adelaide, Ken Hinkley. Now, we've got heaps of doubles too. Port take on Collingwood, Saturday, 10 past four. Hey, if you remember and you go, you could win a Renault. So we want a big crowd there. 10 past four this Saturday. Ken Hinkley, seven wins, five losses. They're in the eight. Beat Sydney at their own game. I was there, Ken. It was outstanding. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Uh, yeah, it was a, a really good day for us uh, on the weekend. And, uh, you know, we had a, a real challenge in front of us. And to the boys' credit, they stood up in the challenge. And, uh, you know, they really wanted to win. And uh, I was really proud of the way they went about it. You know, that typically to play Sydney in those style and that conditions was always going to be a real fight. And the longer the game goes, you think it tends to go into Sydney's yep. favour. Well, for our boys, they really they were really strong at the back end of the game, which was important. That was, and it's given them a lot of confidence. Um, just one last one on that Sydney game. Not one turnover goal. Have you, in the history of AFL, known a team to not get a goal scored against them from a turnover? I've never seen that ever. Uh, no, I don't think I've seen it. But, I mean, again, it's, the it's conditions unreal, made it? it difficult. We did score well in turnover ourselves, but, you know, you look at the stoppage scores the other way, yeah. and Sydney certainly dominated us in yep. forward 50 stoppages. They got four goals from that. So, you know, that's that's just the way the ball rolls sometimes, I think. Yeah, but that means when you've coughed it up, you've gotten on your bike, you defensively as a team, got the ball back off them. I mean, that's an awesome stat. Yeah, look, we... I think you're playing that one down, Ken. Well, I think we rate our defence. There's no doubt about that. We, yeah. We'd like to think that's what we where we start from. Yeah. And, uh, you know, defensively, we want to recover. You know, yep. And that's what that's what turnover does. So you have to recover, and uh, yeah. you know the ability of the boys to work hard to get back to recover, and then the structure behind the ball was always Superb. you know in a pretty good position for us. Mm. What's your philosophy after a win like that? Do the boys do you allow them to celebrate? I mean, it was such a significant win, even for for us watching. Is there a moment to celebrate and enjoy and understand what they did, or are you a lid keeper honour? And oh, no, I think they've got to. I think mm. they've got to enjoy something like that, and you know. Certainly, I was at home with Donna and the kids. My daughter was over, and, and I had a couple of quiet drinks at home with a, with a roast dinner. But the, the boys, I'm sure, would have had a Gee. couple of quiet drinks, you know. But they, look, they're a really good young group. They're really mature. They know that there's next week. Yep. You know, they so they, you know, Jay Schultz actually led the way, and we we spoke, and Jay said it was, it was a good idea for the boys to perhaps to enjoy a victory. Mm. We actually, uh, you know, did the same the week before against GWF. We have some six day break. We got to the airport. I said the boys, it's it's okay to have a couple of drinks. Just make sure it's a couple and that we recover well and we're ready to go to work. Are they a good group? Have you? I mean, have you been surprised by their maturity? I mean, they've been on a bit of a roller coaster. Has anything about them surprised you? Uh, look, their maturity surprised me probably because mm. we're a really young team. We're yeah. the third youngest in the competition. So, But with what they went through, clearly it's given them a real level balance in life, I think. Yep. You know, and they said, well, you've got to earn earn the right to be okay at this game that we're in now and, and whatever you do in life you've just got to work hard and be honest and, and this group do that really well because yeah. you've been I mean you've seen enough other clubs to be able to measure them I mean are they comparable to what you've seen around the place oh yeah look they're at, at the same stage you're a young competitive group and that's yep. that's all you can ask of them at the moment but who know where they want to go and uh, you know they know that AFL's got harder again you, you've got to be committed to the cause and, and they're certainly that where does the improvement still need to come from for us yeah. oh, I think it's over over the whole sp- the whole game, I think we're you know still nothing, nothing really achieved at this stage, other than that we've put ourselves back in the competition where we, as as I said after the game, we've become a little bit more relevant in the competition. But we know that for us, we're going to fluctuate a little, and we still will. We're going to fluctuate a little with some of the stuff we do, as long as our effort stays really close to the to where it needs to be, we'll be okay. And then with that, we'll improve in other areas of the game. You've had a consistent message to the playing group and us the supporters in the media, you'll never give up, and you've done that. Team defence, you know, strong and demanding with that, and, and be brave. Is that the cornerstone of it? Or is there anything we're missing that you maybe drive internally that you want to share? No, no. It's exactly, That's the message. It's exactly what I talk to the players about uh, every day. Yeah. You know, and I, I suppose the other thing I always say to them is that, you know, and they get sick of me saying, all right, do little things and do them well. Yep. And don't do them because you're told to do them because it's the right thing yep. to do. And that's what we talk about every day at the football club. And so far, they've been able to do that. I've loved the development of your back six. I know Tringo's out and Pittard. You've had to try a couple of other players there. But as a unit, they all know their role. And I, I just reckon that's that's been one of my positives, seeing that back six. Because the last couple of years, it wasn't special. The midfield's growing. I know the forwards you need. But that back six, you must be wrapped with how they're playing your brand of footy yeah look they are uh, typical of, the, of a back six group they're pretty desperate yeah. they uh, you know they fight to the death a bit yeah. you know and uh, we've added broadbent there we've put o'shea down there you know jonas has come on and and bobby's been on his own a yeah. little bit with jacko out but then we've had the other players that have been able to do their campbell he's come in and tommy logan i think in his last mm. you know three weeks he's Terrific. come in and you know yeah. tommy had interrupted pre-season where he had surgery yeah. in december 
Yep. You know, and he never got back on the park until the first week of April. So yeah. what he's been able to do, but look, the whole the whole team, I think, pride themselves on helping each yep. other, and that's certainly you know we all know what football's about. The back six tend to be a bit tighter than most, mm. I reckon, because they they're the ones who cop it. You don't seem to have missed Jacko. I'm sure you have, but is is your back half area of still development? I know Rowie's enjoyed watching it. Sometimes you look a little bit small and I think you're punching out of your weight category a little bit, but you're finding ways to do it. Is that an area that you need to build with numbers or a number or a person next year? Uh, I think Jack Homsch has done that for us. Yeah. You know, Homsch has come in. What's he? 193. Okay, which is 6'3", 4". He's he's big enough to be a key defender. I mean, I've I've been around Scarlett at 192 and Tommy Harley, those, but that's the size you probably want. 193, 195 with a bit of, uh, you know, know, a bit of courage in the air. Jack's done that for us Mm. since Jacko's been out, but... It took us a little while to get Jack into the side because he had interruptions too. We would have liked to probably put him in there early because he's pre-season form. I know talking to Schultz, he would say he's the most difficult to play on. Okay. Good. As, as a young defender. Hit a shot. Shoulder, cook shoulder, wasn't no, it? No, he rolled his ankle one day at, at Amy, and then a couple other little things went wrong okay. along the way. So it was sort of one after another that, that held him back. And, and then we wanted him in good form yep. at Sanford level. I think there's no doubt you have to be in good form before you come in. And, uh, you know, for us, the only player we've taken a little risk, I reckon, there at any stage this year has been with Butch. You know, okay. Johnny Butcher, yep. who wasn't he, he, three weeks before we brought him in, his form in the sample was better than probably was when we brought him in. But mm. structurally, you know, you want that extra tall in our forward mm. half, uh, and we'd certainly love to have Jacko in our back half. Is Butch the one that keeps you awake at night? <laughs> no. Is that the one that just think, oh gosh, I can name see a it. couple, go on. No, no, they don't. Uh, Come on, they don't man. keep me awake. Uh, <laughs> I, I wake up thinking about some of them. That's, that's some of the times I go. Uh, what are we going to do? And, and this week, we're probably in that scenario a little bit because we're, we're a chance this week to have, I think, somewhere like 43 out of 44 available. Wow. You know, Travis Bokes, probably 50-50 still as we sit. Trengo will be available to play this week. And, uh, you know, Jasper was back last week and Dom. So we've actually got a really healthy squad. There might be one or two others. Brett Ebert got back and played Magpies last mm. week. So, you know, so far, we're, we're pretty healthy on the field. Can you see something in Butcher that we all sort of see? That some, there's something there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. No, he's, he's a... He's a, he's a big part. Yeah, he's okay. He's a big part of the, the puzzle that we're trying to put together. And, uh, you know, you think of the two talls and now Homsch at, you know, 20. Mm. And we go forward and we've got, uh, you know, Sh- Schultz a little bit older. But then we've got Butcher as a young young key forward and, and Westy. And we look, we're pretty bullish about Mason Shaw too coming through okay. underneath, which mm. is, you know, pretty good for How us. How much patience do you need with John Butcher? Uh, you need, need plenty in this yeah. game. Yeah. Key, oh, for, key, for all, not just for him. Key but, forwards just take time. Okay. They just take time, and uh, you know, Butch hasn't had opportunities to play enough. He's, yep. he's been injured for, for other reasons, and he just needs to play the game of football. And there's going to be games where we watch him play and go, gee, hmm. are, we, are we going there at the right time? But we, we just need to keep pushing him out there and putting games into him. Yep. Ken Hinkley, coach of Port, our guest. They're seven and five. They're in the eight. Uh, we've got Port Collingwood doubles to give away, eight double two three double o double o. if you want to get involved. Um, what are you most excited about moving forward? What, what, what's exciting you about? Sitting in that driver's seat now, moving forward for Port. Oh, just the, the continual challenge of improving this football club. And uh, you know, we, we know with Koshi and Keith that we've we got the club back on track off field. And we, we hopefully, as I said after the weekend, the boys have been backing that up on the field. Mm-hmm. But there's still more to come. There's still more work to be done. It's an incredibly young group. you know, And we know we've got to keep improving. But this game swallows you up if you take your foot off the pedal a little bit. And uh, you know, I'm just going to keep driving them hard. I, I am. I'm demanding as a coach, and I expect that they uh, turn up to work and, and compete as hard as they can every day. There's a lot of stats you can look at. One I do like is you've won 10 of your last 12 quarters, the last quarters. Fitness gives you confidence. Confidence, you can take that out into a field, and you just see in in red time or time on and, and late in games, the guys just lift. They know they're never out of a game. It's a huge thing, fitness down the AFL, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's absolutely no doubt about it. You'd, you'd like to have the belief in what you've got uh, yep. going. And, you know, for us, you know, I've said it to the players two or three times this year, you know if we get to three-quarter time, boys, yeah, we're in this contest. So you draw on it. I tell them. Absolutely. You know, and uh, we believe in it. It's not yeah. it's not something I'm trying to fake with them. It's something no. I believe in. And that yep. with what Burjo and his conditioning team have been able to do with them, but they've they've set the program. It's up. It's been up to the boys to mm. want to do the program as hard as they have to get the results that they have. Yep. No, it's been outstanding. And Jake Need, uh, Neb Rising Star nominee. How good's that? Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, you know, really proud of Jake. He's a, you know, yeah. he's, we know he's a little fella, but uh, you know, he plays football to tackle and run and chase and 
and get after blokes. He doesn't play for kicking goals. I'm sure they're parts that he likes, but yeah. for our team, he's played all by one game because of that defensive pressure, yeah. and uh, he'll stay in our side whilst he yeah. delivers that. Yep. You've got such great uh, value out of Jake. You've also at the other end out of Kane Corns, who maybe we all thought 12 months ago, gee, it's a bit of a crossroad for your career here. So, uh, he's had a fantastic season. Um, is there a contract in your top drawer with his name on it, or does he have to wait a little bit longer for that? No, I'm, uh, Kane and I have had a very honest conversation about where everything's at, and we think Kane will be a part of our future going yep. forward, but that's that's at the right time we make those decisions. Kane's fully aware of that, and, yep. uh, and we are as a club too. With Dom, you know, 30, and, and Kane, there are only two real senior players. Mm. We're not going to be some, a club that treat our champions poorly. You know, and Kane, if it's on Kane's form's good enough, and Kane wants to continue on to play football, there'd be, there'd be absolutely no reason why he shouldn't but he's got to make sure that his form's in that place. And so far, I think no one would would doubt that his form's been really good. Is that important to you, building the football club at the same time you're building the football team? It, it sounds like it's it's hand in hand and go at the same level. I mean, are they on a par? Yep. Yeah, I, I believe in uh, respecting your champs and, mm. uh, and your football club and your history and all those things. You, you want to be proud of your football club and uh, you know, want to be proud of the way you treat your champions of the club. And, uh, you know, we certainly want to do that. But I'm also mindful of the fact that, you, you know, your, your champions need to be able to make the call themselves yeah. of when, it, when it's time, you know, and hopefully you give them enough uh, support and all those decisions that they'll make those right decisions based around, again, because they'll base their decision around what's best for our footy club. Had Sando on last night, and we asked him the question because they've got a different philosophy now with their tagging. Um, we asked him, do you tag? And he said, no, good sides don't tag. Well, you, you're a good side and you do tag. Well, when it's a philosophy, isn't we, we it? Don't, we don't put ourselves, I suppose, in the good side bracket. We put ourselves in a, side, in a, in a bracket where we're, we're trying to improve. But you're we in the tag. eight. You we can tag. talk it down all you like. You're in the eight, Ken. Yeah, we tag. You tag. Yeah, no doubt. We, you know, where do you call it? Run with tag. Yep. You know, cannibal, whatever you want to call it. We tag. Kane yeah. Corns went to Hanbury on the weekend. Outstanding. Dom Cassisi went to McBay at points in the after the first quarter on the weekend. Mm. Moore went at some point to Kennedy yeah. on the weekend. Mm. So, yep. you know, you have everyone will say that you're accountable to a player, but there's certain times in a game you know you've got a, a shut. Yep. Um, list management. What do you need? What have you told your list manager? I, I, I always bring up Alistair Clarkson. Where the, the minute he stepped foot in Hawthorne, he clearly sat down the recruiters and said, I want this, this and this. Competitive animals, got to be great legs, good decisions under pressure. And if they're not, I don't even want to look at them. Yeah. What's yours? Char I'm the list manager. Talk to me. Character and courage. Character and courage. Yeah. So what if I can't kick, but I've got those two? Ah, well, there's a, there's a level. When you get to draft stage, there's, yep. a, there's a level of acceptance and ability. I think everyone yeah. who gets to that point, we know they can all play yep. at some point. But you've got to make a decision on what you're going to build your football club around. And you, you have to start, in, in my opinion, you have to start with character. Because you've got to start with the club being of, of good people. Yep. If you get good people in your organisation, you'll end up in a good club. If I'm a scallywag, can you turn me into a good character in your club, your environment? Uh, I think there needs to be, um, you, know, you need to be really aware of all that, what, what you call scallywag, I suppose. Okay, I'm Dustin Martin. Yeah, I, look, I don't know Dustin, so I, yeah. I, I can't give you a comment on Dustin. Yeah. But I can, And that's unfair to pluck a name no, You're like, Stephen Rowe. That? Could they you handle him? Yeah. Could, no, could you no, handle him in your listen, listen him on the radio, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ken Hickley. I've got you AFL Coach of the Year. Uh, yeah, hard to that can one. Can I just take the Dustin Martin one back? That was unfair. Yeah. Mm. You know, that, that, that is unfair. But you know where I'm coming from. So courage and character, I like it. Yeah, no, that's the way, it's where you start. I mean, they can all play. Yeah. As I said, when, when they get to draft stage, when Parks goes to call them out on draft day, we know they can all play. Yes. But we also want to make sure that we've researched them enough to know we don't expect them all to be yeah. bland and plain and nothing. Yeah. But we do expect them to be, we, we do understand that they're going to have to work hard, yep. they're going to have to commit their body to the contest, mm -hmm. and they're going to have to give everything for the team. And I think there's good spots to start. Yeah, well said. Spoken about your team on field. What about your team off field? How important are they to you? I mean, you've recruited incredibly well rich, from Richardson to Burgess to, to your assistant coaches. Oh, yeah, look, there's no doubt that uh, I'm the lucky one. I get to stand at the front and probably put my hand up and say I'm the coach, but we are a team. Certainly uh, our whole coaching staff was all there before Richo and I both arrived, mm. but Richo and Burjo were certainly new and Burjo had been at the club in the past. But Richo, to me, is just an enormous support. Look, I don't see myself... I am called the senior coach, but I think he's as equally important to our football club as I am. No doubt about that. You are just topical before we go to our calls. And we thank them. We've got those Port Collingwood doubles to give away. And we've got Ken Hinkley, coach of Port in here. Are you a bit worried for Angus Monfries after hearing what Joe Watson said? Because that, that, that's sent alarm bells to us, mm. isn't it? And he's in your team. Yeah, no, I suppose. Uh, I mean, 
uneducated on the whole thing. I'm really okay. not qualified to make too much of a comment. I just hope that, that it gets cleared up quickly for each of the players in, in, that are involved and also for, for Essendon, I suppose, is that there's something that needs to be cleared up really quickly. Yeah, you, you hear some of the comments throughout today and I've heard some of them and, you know, Gus was at that football club. But uh, hopefully for, for, for our sake and for his sake that everything comes out the way we expect it to be. Is there so enough we're... support network around him, enough arms around him? Is he coping with it well? Yeah, yeah, we we, okay. we continue to talk to him okay. regularly about what's what's going on and where it's at because yeah. again he's not at Essendon, so it almost yeah. there's some mm. people who have left that left that That's club right. who have been probably missed out a little bit in mm. the, the support. Well, we're making sure that we support him well really done. strongly. Eight double two three double o double o is our number. Ken, you okay to take a couple of calls? Yeah, absolutely. Got them lining up. Well, Matt. too bad we got them. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> that was a leading question. Uh, Hello, Matt. You've got Ken on the phone. Hey, Ken. How are you going? Good, Matt. Um, I do agree totally. First of all, with um, Butcher. I, a lot of people have been bagging him, especially when I go to the games when he came back and played for the power. But you can just see the X factor that there, that's there. And I really hope that he gets back to what he can, what he's, uh, his ability can achieve. So hopefully he does that. But my main question is, you rested Jake Need the week before the Darwin game. Can you see possibly any of your young players, like, say, an Ollie Wines, can you see them possibly getting tired this time of the year and maybe giving them a break? Oh look, you, you, it's case by case a little bit. Jake's, uh, you know, obviously physically a lot smaller than than Ollie, and uh, you know he's got a uh, you know a much a much harder job to do than probably the, with his body size than Ollie does. But look, if we needed to make those decisions on any of our players, whether that's Ollie or Jake or you know someone else even in their second year, we we would make those decisions based on what they can offer. And if they can't offer what they need to on game day, we we would look to one time you know at some stage rest them or put them back in the sand for where we need to build their form back up. No preconceived plan though, is there? There's no preconceived you play eight then you'll rest no no you play footy each week i think Good. some coaches do that matt we've got a double for you mate port collingwood saturday 10 past four zelko hey, gentlemen uh, zelko, zelko your phone's spin. just breaking up mate just take a do a pirouette or Is jump on better? your head that's better uh, apart from gws for obvious reasons would you consider that you've got one of the best young squads in in uh in the comp that's going to, you know, serve you for the next four or five years? Oh, yeah, look, look my, my responsibility is to think that, no doubt. And I work with these boys um, every day and have done now for seven or eight months. So I believe in what they've got that's going to be capable enough to make us a strong side eventually. But it's going to take a lot of work. And, you know, every club in the AFL, every, every club, even all the coaches at the, at the bottom or the middle or the top of the ladder will believe in their, uh, their list, and that's what you should do. And I think we've got a really strong young list here that's capable of uh, in, continue to improve. Good on you, Zelko. Tony, last caller. Yeah, good day. Good day, guys. Ken, congratulations on the fantastic work you're doing down there with the boys. Uh, mate, just a couple of things. Uh, Kay Mitchell, will uh, he be looked at um, now that Redden's on the long-term injury list? And uh, just quickly... How do you go with having... I mean, you've done a fantastic job with having the, the cameras in the box and uh, Richardson talking during the game, on the Sydney game. Um, is that something different uh, for you? Have you? Obviously, that never happened at Geelong or I've never seen any other club do that. Um, how do you guys go with that? Uh, firstly, Kane Mitchell, you know, Kane will stay on our senior list and is available for selection right through to the end of the year now because of, the, you know, the Redo situation. And, and at mid-season, you get an opportunity to have an upgraded rookie. So Kane will keep his spot on the list. He's missed last week's game uh, for a bye. He'll, he'll play again this week in the Sandful and hopefully be back in good form that we'll consider him. Uh, cameras in the box and everything else. Uh, I think this is the way footy's going. You know, there's quite a bit of it going on now in football. We're comfortable enough to let it go on because I'm of the opinion that it doesn't distract me. And uh, I was a little nervous on the weekend when they were doing live crosses into the box because um, at times I can get a little bit angry. And <laughs> not sure what I'm going to say. So uh, I was really pleased to hear that I, uh, I stayed a bit quiet at the right time. See, we haven't caught that one yet, have oh, we? I sent Josh Carr a text when he had the camera on his head. That was a shocker. <laughs> Did you pay him out? No, Josh has had it he a few had times. He had this great big camera on his head. Oh, it cracked me up. Um, Tony, I had a double for you as well, mate. Port take on Collingwood. This Saturday, it's 10 past four. Big crowd. If you remember, you've signed up. And you go to that game, you can win a Renault. Um, talking about that game, attention to it, that's winnable. Oh, boy, is that winnable. Yeah, absolutely. We've got to go in there and, and play at our absolute best. And as you said, with the, uh, you know, the, for, for our fans, it's a really important day. 16,000 were there on the weekend. They lifted the site. You know, we get this weekend with the Renault going off at the... If yep. you've got to be at the ground, you've got, you've got to be a member. You've yep. got to be a 2013 member. You've got to turn up at the ground yep. and you've got to make sure you're there to, to cheer us on. But we'll plan really well. But our fans, they lift us. Yeah. They absolutely lift us. And I'm sure every football club probably feel that. But the Port fans, and I've only been here a little while, my son, Geordie's been to the football with me. He's been yeah. up the Gold Coast for a couple of years. He said, 
there was only 16,000 there, Dad, but they just lift the joint. They really lift the uh, the players and they lift everyone around it. So we just need, I'd love nothing better this week. If we had 40 plus thousand <laughs> Port fans there to take on the Magpies and we'd love nothing better than to go out there and give a really good account of ourselves. When do you rise, uh, lift your eyes a little and look towards later in the year to an August or September? Does that ever enter your equation? I know you've always said no. Win this one, you're in the eight and don't crap me. <laughs> We're in the See, eight that's now. How he said Bang! It, I said, oh, yeah, I said gonna... it nicely. You said it horribly. <laughs> no, we're in the eight. We're, You're well, in look, the eight now. That's a great answer. We're in the eight now. But uh, uh, what we need to do is, is uh, look. I had a question over the weekend from one of the others. I think it was from Caroline Wilson. It was, yeah. and, and I, and you, as a coach, you don't want to give boring answers. But the facts are, we'll get what we deserve. Mm, yeah. Now, hopefully, we'll deserve at the end of the year that we'll finish up as high as we possibly can, and wherever that is, we'll deserve it. And if we and if we miss, we'll we'll deserve that too because that's what I'm like. Yeah. Three quick questions before we let you go. These came on the SMS, and so we've got to give them their pound of flesh. Who's the biggest tragic footy tragic in your side? Somebody wanted to know. You've got one that just lives, sleeps, eats, breathes, and there's a pest annoys you. So uh, a player that just kind of, no, not not, not, not so much a footy tragic. I, I love Tommy Jonas. Tommy uh, Jonas. He just he just keeps in, he knocks on my door every week, and he's in there Does all he? the time. Beautiful kid, Nick Salter. Where is he in your thoughts? Yeah, Saltz has uh, had a rest last week. He, he, again, like some of the boys, he's had some interruptions, had a foot injury which held him out for long. He's in really good sample form. Mm. Obviously, he's got to wait for the opportunity. Forward? Yeah, forward. I told him that. I think he's more a forward than a defender, so that's where we see him. Mate, we know you're busy. Thanks for coming in. To all your, your Port fans that are out there listening, um, you're seven and five. Big game this weekend. We'll mention again Port Collingwood, Saturday 10 past four. You just heard from Ken. It's that important for you to turn up. Not only you can win a Renault if you're a member, but a huge crowd. Kent, mate, you're so accessible. You're fantastic. You're honest. You hit us between the eyes. Um, Mate, thanks for coming in. No, No problems, boys. Enjoy the weekend and hopefully another power win. Well done.